you welcome back. This is Business Morning from Channels Television. We've been talking about Nigeria's economic development, and our guest has been the Honorable Minister for Trade and Investment, Mr. Lushegun Aganga. Thank you for still staying with us on the show. We're going to go into the auto policy in details. I know that you've talked about that in bit I earlier. I would have been surprised if you didn't, but that's fine. <laughs> it's one touchy area for Nigerians, I want to say. And um, we've got actually some tweets coming in. And this one, I'm going to start off from this one. Uh, Adebayo is asking you, it says, the auto, the auto policy has been a concern for many Nigerians. Now, why is the government bringing the auto policy, uh, auto policy by increasing tariffs for Tokumbo cars, that's fairly used cars, when Nigeria has not started producing its own, that's its own vehicles yet? That's a question from Adebayo. Adebayo, Adebayo thank you for asking that question. Um, I don't know what you're referring to, but there was a scare in the newspaper earlier on this year that Tokumbo's car, that the duty has gone up. The truth is that it has not gone up. We have not increased the duties to 70%. We have gone to the press, we have gone to the media, media, we have published statements to say that statement is not true. We haven't. And we have made it very clear to the Nigerian people. Let's start again so that people can understand why we're doing this. If you understand why we're doing it, then you understand why, why you have to support it uh, and do what we need to do. Today, we spend about $6 billion every year importing cars and spare parts and rail. We can't afford to do that anymore, given what you're saying. We, we, we see the falling oil price. We see the devaluation. We cannot afford to do that as a nation anymore, to start with. We have a population. Yes, we say we have a population of 170 million people, average age of 18 years. More people are going to need cars. When you become so import dependent, it becomes a balance of payments issue. And of course, with the fall in, in oil price and the devaluation, the prices are going to go off the roof anyway. So we don't have a choice. If we want to fix this economy, we have to reduce our dependence on importation. We cannot afford $6 billion every year on that. We cannot afford $10 billion importing petroleum products anymore. We cannot afford to import $3 billion, spend $3 billion, $3 billion importing uh, steel. We cannot afford to spend about $1.5, $1.6 billion importing rice that we can produce in this country. So the uh, Nigeria has that competitive advantage. What is, what is car? A car is made up of steel and rubber. And we have iron in this country, we have rubber, we have plastic, we have everything, this, most of it in this country. So we can develop... How much a, of this uh, are being tapped? Because no, we no, have no, a lot no, of raw no, materials, we have commodities. We, exactly. It take, it take if, a, we are, yeah. if we are importing, it just shows that the level of exploration that in the right, country is, is why, not up to exactly, which what is we want to Which be. is why you have to have a policy to make this happen. If we don't have a policy, it will never, ever happen. That's why it has not happened today. That's why Peugeot went back 30 years ago. That is why Volkswagen had to go back. So you needed to have that policy and work on your local content and have the policy across the value chain, not just car assembly. I'm not interested in just car assembly. I want to produce uh, the, 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 the parts. There are 2,000 parts. I want to create jobs in this country. I want to make sure that I can export parts to America, to different parts of the country, and we can. It's just a matter of time. So they took in every country, if you look at the 10 most populous nations in the world today, there were two countries that did not have this policy, Bangladesh and Nigeria. All the others did because it was becoming a balance of payment issue. It was something that affected the economy. Things you and I do affect the whole economy, and then we complain about the economy as well. We must be ready to make some sacrifices. Now, in all of these countries, used cars were banned. If you don't ban used cars, you will not be able to develop your the, the, the demand enough to make it commercial enough for the likes of uh, Innocent, the likes of Pujo, the likes of Nissan mm -hmm. to come and assemble in this country. Right. It's a function of demand. So what we have done, which is different from any other country, is that we refuse to ban the importation of Tokumbo cars. We said we would do two things. We'll make sure you have affordable finance in the country, reduce interest rate to make sure that you can actually afford new cars and pay over a four or five year period. We said we will encourage our local assemblers to produce uh, um, the affordable cars in the country. Those are the two prerequisites. Once we achieve those two prerequisites, then we'll look at the uh, Tukumbo cars. But for now, 
we have not increased the duty. Okay, before we look at other tweets, I just want to ask you, I would like you to bring up to speed on the production of these cars in Nigeria. What is going on in that respect? What is going on is only 12 months, and I think we have exceeded our expectations. So if I say, for example, the policy was announced on the 2nd or 3rd of October uh, last, uh, 2013, within a week of making that announcement, Nissan announced that it was coming to assemble in this country. By the 29th of May, Nissan publicly showcased the cars of assembly in this country. That is big progress for the country. Now, and that will create a lot of jobs, and it's good for this country. The second point is that you had Hyundai have started assembly in this country. We have Peugeot went back. Peugeot are back in Nigeria today and are, pro are producing three, uh, two, two cars, uh, makes in terms of models. Peugeot actually has just set up their new uh, credit purchase schemes for cars, which will make it affordable and easier for people to buy Peugeot cars for the next four years. Volkswagen went back, they're back again in Nigeria. Then we have 18 other companies that have indicated their interest to come and assemble this country. Uh, Ford was here last week, carrying out their final due diligence because they're going back to the board. We know Toyota, we've been talking to Toyota, they're doing the same thing. Okay. When you have names like this, it must be they know that the opportunity is here. Okay. And the idea is not just to produce here for Nigeria, it's also to export here. I, we don't have much time, uh, Honorable Minister, but I'd like us to go through this tweet because of our viewers who are, who are watching and we want to ask you uh, more questions. Uh, now, this is from Ibrahim. He says, why is government giving textile manufacturers low funding now? Is it not political? We know that textile manufacturers have been suffering. Why is this low funding coming now? The low funding is not coming now. The, you, you refer to the textile fund that has been in place for about four years. The review I referred to was, it took place last year. We made that, uh, the, the changes as a result of that review. So it's not just coming now. Secondly, we have been consulting with that sector for two years until we finally got a policy passed by the Federal Executive Council in December. We just launched it about a week or two ago. So it's not political at all. And it's so important that we deal with that industry. It, it was the second employer of labor after government in the 60s. The, and this time we've gone, not, we've gone beyond textile. We've gone to, te, to, to garmenting. We've gone to tailoring. We've gone to fashion design. So it's from farm to fashion. It's the first time we'll do that. As a result of that visco, you know about them, they signed an MOU with the government last week. And already they are buying textile materials from local producers in this country and exporting them. Mm. So, so it is it's a wonderful opportunity. So people were producing cotton, but they have people to buy them. The, the cotton internationally, the price has come down. They okay. have cotton. There. But when you produce, that's the importance of commodities-based industrialization. You can, when you produce things from, from the farm, you either sell them or you produce them for the industrial use. Okay. Now, Tito Bay is saying Nigeria is mono-economic, that saying that Nigeria is a mono-economic economy at the moment. So, and she, he or she now says that the way forward is mining, but the problem with the industry is over-regulation. What's your thought about this? The way forward is not mining. Is it Chido Zay? Tito Bay. Tito, Tito Bay, okay. Yeah. The way to mine is not mining, if you forgive me. It's actually commodities-based industrialization because we have strength in agriculture. We have strength in mining. We have strength in oil and gas. It's commodities-based industrialization. And I hear the point, now, now let me go to a specific point of mining. The Minister of Mines and I are working very, very closely together. Our regulations compare to the best in the world. We have looked at it. We have tweaked it. We have made all the necessary changes. I have been with him together. We've gone to Canada, Australia. They've looked at our regulations and the policy. They are very happy with it. I don't think they're that restrictive. If there are any complaints, we would like to hear from him. And they, if, but I encourage him to look at the recent regulation and find out where they have not been addressed. I think they have been addressed, but they haven't. We are a listening government. We will listen to anyone. Our job is to create an enabling environment. Mm -hmm. My job, I enjoy talking, going to factories, meeting with people. Send your, send your comments to me, to my ministry, to the Minister of Mines. We'll, I assure you, we'll deal with them if okay. they have not been dealt with. And, and this final tweet, uh, before I let you go, is uh, from Olamide. It says, making policies without executing them is like having the whole textbooks and not reading any. 
we do not see the impacts at all. Now, the impact of the policies. There are a whole lot of policies. I think, I think it's unfair to say that. You need to be a bit more specific on them. There is no policy to start with. I think making policies one is a quality of implementation that is most significant. That was where we were weak in the past. Mm. And this is one area that this government has addressed by putting in structures in place to make sure that we monitor implementation. And not just government monitoring implementation, we involve the private sector in monitoring this. So that is what we have done to address that. When you talk about the effect, you have to look at different policies. If you look at power, for example, you know, when you, the, 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 the fact that you have the policy in place, it takes three years if you're doing gas power production for you to start generating power after, once you start committing funds. It doesn't happen immediately. When you talk about the policy from sugar cane to sugar, where from the waste of producing sugar, you produce ethanol, you produce animal fuel, you produce electricity, okay. it takes time. You do the cultivation, you, you do the, the cultivation, you do the, uh, the, the plant itself before it comes on board. Okay. Some of these things take two, three years. Right. Uh, That's maybe why you're not seeing some of the uh, impact of what you expect to see today. But the, it's not a case of let there be light. And there's light. All right. In one minute, I'm just going to ask you this final question. Now, we just we just uh, in the beginning of the year. We're still in the month of January. How do you see the economy playing out for 2015, uh, vis -a vis the elections? Or do you think that uh, work is going on in terms of economic development despite the general elections that is just around the corner? Well, in spite of general election, that's I'm here today. Tomorrow, I'm in a bar opening a factory on, on Thursday I'm back in Lagos again going to Chaga, I'm going to uh, Ikorodu, uh, I'm going to uh, the, the, uh, Ota also to op open different factories there to meet with uh, investors there so the, we, we're continuing with our work to start with but but that's the only solution I think the, way, the only answer to this yeah we're going to have challenges if the oil price continues to fall the answer is where will it stabilize once we know where it stabilizes, then that will tell us how bad and harsh it's going to be. But the most important thing is that as Nigerians, we must not miss the opportunity. The opportunity is to accelerate the implementation of the Industrial Revolution Plan. And the only way you can do it is to have continuity in government. All right, thank you. Now, that'll be all I will take from you, Honorable Minister. Uh, Olushie Aganga, Minister for Trade and Investment. We've been talking about the Nigerian economy in terms of the development that has taken place so far and what is yet to be done by the present administration and as elections actually draw nearer uh, we'll, we've been told that the work is to going on in terms of economic development and other all on business morning want to thank everyone out there for taking our time to watch the program and i want to also uh, thank those of you who sent in tweets we have we thank tito bay ibrahim adebayo we thank you so much for your tweets. Uh, we hope you could join us again same time tomorrow. I am Bolaji Akimali. Bye for now.